Uh, thank you, Chair. So I'd like to start my presentation uh, with uh, reminding the today's theme, that is the uh, medicine. So uh, President of ICRP uh, uh, saying that life-saving medical application, including the use of linear accelerators. Uh, uh, actually, today's talk is relating to the accelerator, uh, that is particle therapy. So this is my self-introduction. I joined to the company and started my career with nuclear fuel uh, design uh, engineer. And then uh, I start uh, proton therapy uh, experience for the regulatory safety and the standards uh, for 15 years. And then I am the Japanese professional engineer for nuclear and radiation. So I experienced the earthquake uh, resulted in the Fukushima accident. At that time, uh, I worked as a professional engineer uh, to get involved for the uh, public acceptance. And then now I'm a role of the IEC expert as well as the national committee uh, to support the IEC uh, activities. And I also experienced the project manager for uh, St. Jude in Memphis, Tennessee. So that, that's because uh, my business name is uh, Elvis. Uh, but unfortunately, Elvis never come to the Australia, so I guess this is the first tour in Australia. <laughs> so not just a speaker, but uh, I'd like to uh, take a role of ambassador. So this is a today's uh, talk, uh, four point, uh, starting with the growing demand of particle therapy. So this number, uh, 300,000, is the uh, cancer uh, patient per year uh, for the young age. And then also the, this number, 18.1 uh, million uh, diagnosed as cancer, and then 9.6 million died from cancer in uh, 2018, uh, it cost this number. And then here is the ranking of the uh, type of disease. Then uh, red character shows uh, the uh, disease which can be uh, treated with particle therapy. Uh, this is just a typical case, and other diseases can be eventually uh, treated. And then, as you see, uh, compared to the surgical therapy or chemotherapy, so radiotherapy has a uh, less invasible uh, therapy, uh, but uh, for, with the X-ray, those two healthy tissue is still high. Then our particle therapy can reduce this dose to the half or third. With this, uh, we can ensure the quality of life uh, for the cancer patient. And furthermore, uh, we can contribute to the multidisciplinary therapy, including the, such an innovative uh, therapy uh, with a minimally invasive solution. So uh, with the X-ray, uh, this is a wave, so penetrate the body. Uh, in the meantime, such particle uh, uh, dispose the energy uh, inside the body, so uh, they can uh, have a good uh, characteristic for cancer treatment. So this is the uh, explanation. So the particle has a black peak like this, and uh, this is a typical treatment planning. So in the case of X-ray, uh, X-ray is penetrated to the body, uh, through the body. In the meantime, particle beam can stop here. So this enable the uh, target tumor uh, adjusting the black field position, this range, and then uh, mitigate damage to the organ at risk. So this is the example of the uh, particle therapy system. Uh, in this case, this is a proton therapy system. Here's a uh, irradiation nozzle, uh, irradiating the uh, proton from here, and then we align the patient with laser positioner. And then, uh, uh, with the guidance with X-ray, we precisely align the patient with a robotic couch. So this is the uh, workflow of the, uh, this treatment. So download the plan, 
and then move the couch to the patient's position, uh, treatment position, and course alignment, final alignment, then irradiate the beam. And this uh, process is repeated uh, for the multiple field. Okay, then uh, move on to the development of uh, particle therapy. So this is the uh, beginning of particle therapy. Uh, around 1950, uh, Lawrence Buckley Laboratory uh, developed the cyclotron, and then uh, therapy based on cyclotron uh, started with the uh, several type of particle. And then here is the uh, history uh, of the uh, uh, radiation therapy and particle therapy. In the late 80s, so there is a contribution by Japan uh, at the NIRS at Chiba Prefecture, uh, we started the proton therapy, and in 94, started the carbon uh, therapy. So now uh, we have uh, this number, a little bit uh, old data, but uh, more than uh, 100 uh, facility is now in planning or operation. And then, uh, so facility is increasing, the uh, patient is increasing. And then uh, from the research level, now it is a uh, uh, clinical use. And then this number of patients are treated a year. So in Japan, uh, this is a trend of uh, treated patients. And then uh, Japanese uh, is leading the uh, carbon therapy, so this blue part. So this is the data uh, from uh, NIRS. So nearly uh, 25,000 pa patients were treated within this uh, period. And then 80% of them were treated in Japan, and half of them are NIRS. So NIRS is treating the various kinds of uh, disease, uh, and then this advanced medicine means uh, government uh, support uh, the, this therapy and then uh, patient uh, pay uh, this amount of money. But nowadays, uh, government uh, insurance could cover, can cover several uh, type of disease. So it is uh, half or so. So it is an example of advantage of uh, particle therapy. So uh, left-hand side is the uh, mice uh, experiment, and then uh, right-hand side is a, a retrospective study. Uh, then it revealed that uh, carbon uh, reduced the risk of subsequent primary cancer. Then this is a um, statistics are by Bender. So we Hitachi, uh, uh, from the uh, patient base, uh, we are treating this number. And then uh, some of them are proton, some of them are carbon. Then this is the uh, uh, latest facility uh, in Japan uh, for carbon is Osaka Heavy Iron Therapy Center, very close to the Osaka Castle. Actually, here is the center. And then uh, we are planning to hold uh, PT Cog uh, Asia Oceania uh, in early December. And then a proton facility. Uh, here is the Kyoto Prefecture University of uh, Medicine. So this is a very uh, unique uh, interior uh, to the children. And then started uh, treatment. So such a historical place, we have uh, uh, such a facility. So I hope you can visit there someday. So uh, as a result, uh, we are developing the uh, proton, carbon, and hybrid system supported by uh, a, so diagnosed modality, uh, treatment planning, and other services. So, uh, our technical development is a kind of spiral up. So for those elements, so firstly, we improve the quality uh, of the therapy, like a dose distribution 
or reducing the neutron. And then, uh, with the image-guided uh, therapy, uh, improve the precision and also uh, deal with the moving target. And then, uh, nowadays, our big target is the uh, economical uh, good solution uh, with the compact system and the better throughput. And also, uh, there are high, de high demand from the, our users uh, to improve safety and usability. In terms of the user experience, that means uh, user friendly. And uh, also, we are, uh, as an industry, we are in, uh, trying to do the new uh, innovation, like a higher dose rate treatment and AI assisted uh, therapy or adaptive therapy. So this is a development history uh, with our customer. So starting from 2001, we gradually developed the uh, technology uh, to realize the user's uh, demand. So like uh, development spot scanning, uh, or development of uh, gating system, and carbon facilities. So I will uh, present some example of our development. So this is a, a scanning uh, technique. So using the scanning magnet, uh, so we scan the beam uh, with the uh, narrow beam. And then this is a, uh, some case where organ at risk uh, is surrounded by the target. So using the three field irradiation, so we can avoid irradiation to the organ at risk and then concentrate to the, uh, the target. Uh, next one is the image guidance. So our compact gantry can uh, get the volumetric uh, image uh, using the uh, gantry mounted Combeam CT. And then uh, we can match with the uh, plan uh, CT data uh, and then provide a better uh, precision of patient positioning. And uh, next one is the uh, gated, real time gated uh, tracking. So, using the uh, X ray uh, uh, fluoroscopy, so look at the markers inside, and then uh, when the marker is inside the, the defined volume. Then beam is on. When the marker is outside, beam is off. In such a way, uh, so the patient can breathe uh, freely, and then our system can follow the uh, patient movement. And next is the uh, development on carbon uh, facility. So in '94, first NIRS facility, HIMAC, uh, is this big. So actually, this is a kind of multi-purpose facility, so accelerating the multiple type of ions. But uh, Gunma University is the dedicated for carbon and then realize the compact uh, layout. And then now uh, NIRS, now name is QST, uh, is leading the development of uh, quantum scalper, so with the consortium of uh, Japanese vendors. Uh, next topic, radiation protection and safety. So we have a very solid uh, guideline, a publication from the ICRB, uh, as well as uh, guideline from another uh, organization like IAEA, uh, PTCOG, and the QST is still leading the such uh, a study uh, from their point of view. And practically speaking, so we can uh, summarize in such a way. So this is a, a person to protect, and then this is a, a mean to protect. So for the radiation, so beam loss, beam source shielding, such kind of thing is important. And then for activation, so it is actually low risk, but uh, still uh, need to t uh, take care. And then for misradiation to the patient, 
uh, as a manufacturer, we are following the uh, standard. So this is a uh, schematic of the uh, synchrotron-based system. So in this case, radiation source is here, the RINAC and the synchrotron. And then here is transport system. And then uh, beam losses could happen uh, in the synchrotron or beam shaping a nozzle or treatment room. That means patient itself. So it is uh, the uh, a good approach to reduce the uh, radiation source and the beam loss. The other consideration is the uh, monitoring and access control. So uh, this is uh, uh, one example of monitoring the area and then control the access. So this uh, orange area are secured by uh, area search so to make sure there is no person uh, inside. And then green area is open for uh, access. And then uh, we have here uh, area readiness status. So in this case, in this room, uh, X-ray exposure is uh, uh, happening. So this is red. And radiation monitoring. So here is the numerical uh, display. And the area search status. And also we have a motion detector to avoid any uh, erroneous irradiation to the person. Okay. So for the uh, patient safety, so IEC uh, team is developing the a safety standard for light ion uh, therapy system. Then with this, this is a, a under the general uh, standard like this, uh, quality management, risk assessment, and the uh, general standard. And then this is a particular standard for light ion. So this is talking about uh, erroneous condition and uh, how to uh, reduce the risk, like a redundant monitoring system or interlocks. And also the, uh, deal with the uh, non-primary radiation to the patient. So in the case of uh, particle therapy or radiation therapy, we need to take care of not just the treatment system itself, but also the uh, planning system or, uh, or record and verify system or any other aspect like this. And then also, uh, in order to deal with the innovation of the technology, uh, we are uh, improving the, uh, these standards. Uh, that is done by IEC uh, Technical Committee, uh, Subcommittee 62C, and we are, the invo uh, the, uh, we are the working group one. And then in Japan side, uh, JIRA is supporting uh, those activities. Okay. Finally, role and responsibility as a manufacturer. So in order to provide good uh, particle therapy, the medicine, physics, and the engineering have to be cooperating together. So in person, physician, physicist, and the manufacturer. And a scientific uh, society is supporting the, uh, each responsibility like this. And nowadays, uh, also the biology and the uh, regulatory science uh, is taking a very important role uh, for the multidisciplinary therapy or uh, technical innovation. Then, uh, we'd like to uh, work together uh, for, with the such organization uh, by the proactive involvement uh, to support such activities. So in conclusion, so there is an increasing demand of particle therapy, and then um, for this, we are uh, doing the continuous development. And the cooperation uh, together is uh, very important. And not just technology, but also uh, we, we need to consider the public acceptance. So thank you for, uh, I'd like to express special thanks for and the person who supports my presentation, and the organizer. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much indeed for that overview. Now, we have a couple of questions that uh, have come in. In fact, they're coming in quite rapidly. So, the first question says, particle therapy needs a big investment preventing many hospitals to equip. What is the secret for Japan to install a large number of machines? And do you have a special funding mechanism or reimbursement? Okay. So, firstly, uh, the initial investment uh, may be important. So, in Japan case, so most of the facility is supported by national government or a local government uh, to establish the facility. And then, uh, some private hospital, uh, they invest their own. And then as for the insurance coverage, uh, some disease like uh, head and neck, uh, prostate, or bone marrow tumor, uh, the government uh, insurance cover such uh, disease. But the uh, uh, coverage uh, is not so high, so every hospital uh, is doing uh, the effort uh, to um, make sure the, uh, the better running of their facility. So that's why uh, we are now uh, developing the uh, technology uh, to improve the throughput uh, for the hospital. So to increase the patient uh, treated in a day and then uh, reduce the burden on the uh, clinical staff. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, the next question is, for the carbon therapy, what types of tumor are the most effective and do you have any uh, data on recurrence rates? So, it, talking about carbon, not proton ions, which tumours respond most effectively to carbon ions? Do you have any uh, yeah. data on that? So, uh, with the carbon, uh, bone marrow tumour is the one of the uh, advantage uh, to the other uh, method. Right. And, and, and is there... Is, uh, are there any data about recurrence rates following the carbon therapy? Re recurring. Yeah, recurrent tumor. Um, I think so, but uh, t today I don't have a preparation okay. of the data. Okay, fine. Um, do manufacturers have a responsibility to ensure facilities as complex as these you've described have a long-term robust plan for ensuring provision of the service? So, you mean how to achieve the downsizing or um, I don't think term? the person asking that rent particularly about downsizing. Um, I mean, is there any way, I think it's more to say that once, once one of these machines is actually installed, they're very, they're very complicated. Mm -hmm. so, so what about keeping the, the scans updated and ensure that the, uh, the service then can continue to run? Okay, so uh, firstly, so we are providing the uh, service uh, for, for the quality assurance of the uh, system. Uh, in our case, it is typical to, uh, for, for the uh, uh, maintenance team and technician is located on site. And then, in addition to that, uh, we are offering the, some uh, upgrade uh, to uh, make it better. Uh, like, uh, uh, so it may not be a good example, but uh, uh, change from image intensifier to the flat panel detector uh, to avoid obsolescence. And also, the, uh, we are trying to uh, integrate the human machine interface as much as possible uh, to make it efficient. Okay, thank you. There's one another question. What is your advice on the handling and disposal of the activated machine compo components and treatment room shielding structural walls when the facility is decommissioned in view of the long half-life? Mm. Uh, it, it's a good, good question. And um, 
Uh, as for the uh, routine operation, the activation is quite low. So only for the component uh, interact with the beam is treated as the uh, radioactive material. And as for the uh, decommissioning, still we are uh, running the uh, facility, so uh, there is no detailed uh, study right now, but uh, uh, the activation uh, may be uh, minimal, and then we can uh, reduce the activation in a reasonable time. Okay. Thank you. Are there any, um, oh, hang on, there's another one. Ding. No, it's not, no, sorry, that's not, that's an old one. Ha, has anyone on the floor got any questions they want to ask? We can't see. Can I maybe just ask you, you showed how the, the facilities have gradually got smaller in size with your quantum scalpel. Is there further scope to reduce the size of the facilities even more? So, um, there might be a uh, kind of uh, limit, but uh, we are trying to uh, achieve the downsizing by uh, development of a uh, smaller accelerator or uh, so introducing the uh, superconducting magnet uh, to uh, make the transport system uh, smaller. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tamida. That's uh, for your uh, answers and your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.